Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to Facebook Live on May 26, uh, 2021. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Um, today is uh, the lunar eclipse, supposedly. It's a full moon light. So light and night. So it's going to be an interesting if uh, they normally say, right, like uh, on full moon day, if there are people that are already having psychological issues, it gets overly enhanced. So just a forewarning to everyone, it's a, a beautiful day to meditate a little bit more, do more of your presence practice, right? So let's get started on the Facebook Live Q&A. Um, we are joined by a few members of our panel. Some of them are missing. Hopefully Kelly can make it, but maybe he's running late. Uh, but we are here with April, who's joined us after a couple of weeks. Um, she's a psychic, and um, I think you do uh, Reiki healing as well, and a spiritual teacher. Good evening, April. And then we are joined by Caesar, who is our medium and spiritual teacher. Good evening, uh, Caesar. Travis and uh, Louise will not be able to make it, so the only other person that could possibly join is Kelly. And uh, of course, we also have our incredible Eileen, who's going to provide her own insights uh, with our topics. So uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been talking about um, past conditioning or uh, limiting beliefs that we may have, and we've been examining our own uh, uh, limiting beliefs, right? And uh, something that is not very obvious. So this is a um, question for April and Caesar and Eileen. What happened last week was uh, when in the Q&A, Cecile was talking about um, people, like she was uh, responding, to what, had like a, a real urge to respond to people and their posts, right? Like she posted something, somebody else responded, and then she had an urge to respond back, right? That urge to keep responding, responding, responding. And then she realized that it was a useless activity. So she said, I'm just not gonna do that, right? Like, I'm just gonna move away from that. And what I said was, even that is a certain, carries a certain amount of karma. Right? It's very subtle. People may think that I'm doing a kind act by pulling away, right? Uh, but that in itself is karma. And I'll explain another situation. Sadhguru has come out with this book on karma. And he, in there, he explains a story that if two men were uh, visiting a, a, a prostitute, right? So the, they would go, do that every week, once a week. So one, one day when they were walking, there was a spiritual talk going on. One man went to the spiritual talk, the other one went to the prostitute. And then what uh, Sadhguru says is the man who was in the spiritual talk starts to think about his friend having fun with the prostitute, right? And then the guy who was with the prostitute starts to think about the man who is um, in um, having a uh, in the talk, right? So what Sadhguru explains is is the man who was in the spiritual talk is creating more karma than the man who actually is with the prostitute. You know, in our uh, mind, we may think that he's doing a bad deed because we are such a good and bad kind of the, uh, we try to categorize everything, this is good, this is bad, right? But what Sadhguru says is, this guy who is thinking of enhancing his life by saying, oh, I should have actually been at the spiritual talk instead of being with this prostitute, is doing better karma than this guy 
who is thinking about being with the prostitute, right? Uh, that he's losing all the fun, uh, kind of, even though he's at the, a spiritual talk. So I want you to think of ways that we may be creating that kind of karma, right? Out of our patterns. Um, another example I'll give you is um, I know, um, and since we are looking within ourselves from our own experiences and drawing from our own experiences, and I know y'all do a lot of consultation as well. You'll see a pattern in some other person that may have come across your path, um, Caesar and April, that had a pattern that looked like they were they were doing good, but actually would be considered that they were creating karma, which is the reaction part of the action, right? Uh, not just action, not uh, non-polarized action, but something that would create the negative uh, negative polarity. Something like, let's say, ever since childhood, I was very envious of my brother. And in India, there's always a uh, comparison, right? That they say uh, women are not actually given, like the girl child doesn't get more. So if, if he got like a green box, I needed a red or an orange box, right? It's like my mom always had to make sure what she bought for my brother, she bought like the girly color of that for me. So that, that envy, but I would, anytime she did something more and she did do something more, I think it was that, and I realized the manifestation was my expectation, right? That she would do more uh, for my brother. But that envy, right? It shows up even at work. What happens is when we get into corporate America, that envy shows up when other people get recognition, right? When coworkers get recognition, we feel like, um, and Eckhart has a beautiful phrase where he says, when we see success, we should also see the success of the other, we should see our own success in the success of the other, right? So I want you to think of, do you all know of any time that you see that we may think we were doing good, but we were not doing good. It actually is karma. Whenever we think of envy, right, the jealousy arises. It may not show up, like it doesn't show in our face. It doesn't, but you know, internal energy, you were jealous, right? I was jealous of my brother, right? So I was creating karma until now that we have such a strong presence practice, the presence prevails, right? We, we kind of get that unity consciousness. So Caesar, you wanna get started? And then I'll move to Eileen and April. Sure, and I would just start by saying that where you are vibrationally will really give you a good indication on where you're at in life. I mean, if you're surrounded by things or people that are quote unquote doing bad things or and regardless of your thoughts about them, it comes down to why are you attracted or what attracted you to that person? And ultimately we can say that it's your vibrational frequency um, in order for that to happen. So when you find yourself around people that are vibing high and happy and joyous, you're probably a happy and joyous person at this point in your life. If you are hanging around schmucks and people that create drama or sleepy people, unconscious people, you are probably one of them as well at that point in your life. So to be in the situation and to have spiritual thoughts about it, um, doesn't really do much for the action part of who you are, because that's going to determine more about yourself and show you the real you, as if we look inside to be able to see that, um, regardless of what you're saying, it's what you're doing ultimately that matters, um, because we can do bad all day long and then tell ourselves or tell our friends, listen, I'm a good person. Well, the lion doesn't have to go around telling everybody he's a lion and the shark doesn't swim in the ocean telling all the other fish he's a shark. He just does shark stuff. Um, 
So again, it starts with the frequency in which you vibe at, and that dictates everything that shows up in your life according. Um, that's called alignment. That's what uh, until the whole game works as far as energy, and um, and just pay attention to what's showing up in your life, and that will give you a good indication on where you at, on where you stand. What you know, if you're vibing low, raise your vibrational frequency by hanging around. Higher vibing people, um, do good, don't say good. Um, be the change you wish to see, but it starts off with the desire and perhaps you need that contrast to be in a situation where you're doing grimy stuff or things that aren't so good. Um, as you mentioned, like with the prostitute or, or the guy with the prostitute and he's there, um, and maybe it, it all starts with the contrast. And, and if that's the case, you have to embrace the contrast because it allows you to see and know what you do want by experiencing what you don't want. And you have to see that in order to put the desire of something that you do want out there, if that makes sense. Um, so it starts there. So um, the notion or the awareness that things ain't um, proper and you're not on the right path, technically speaking, you're always on the right path. So any instances that show up, embrace them. Um, and then shift into whatever gear you need to, to rectify that and manifest a higher vibrational frequency and everything starts from there. Thank you so much, Caesar. Thank you. Beautiful. So the work here on Earth School is to get to the point where our vibrational frequency is of the highest frequency, what Abraham Hicks calls the high flying disc, which um, at that high flying disc, all that we are experiencing is a sense of joy. What Eckhart says, right? There's a background of joy with whatever we are doing. There's loving kindness, there's compassion, there's empathy, gratitude, right? Flows from that human being. Um, Eckhart had a beautiful, and all those out there that have been attending School of Awakening, Eckhart had a beautiful analogy. Of, I don't know if it was this talk or the talk before this uh, past, this Thursday's um, um, Q&A. He talks about like the human being needs to be, um, is like the lamp with the lamp shape. Some human beings have like a very dark shape. And to me, it, I don't know how many people have seen like a lampshade where there are two or three shades over each other. And like you enter the room and it's so dimly lit, right? There's such dimness. And the human being is that way, that they're so dim, like very little consciousness flowing in. And he says, our job is to be transparent, right? And that's what, um, like last week, we were talking during the Q&A, we were talking about, uh, with Travis, we were talking about why I do medical medium protocol. And I said, it gives me the highest vibrational frequency, right? Once the moment I do the spinach soup and I do the uh, heavy metal detox, like I take my uh, barley grass juice water and the um, uh, blueberry, wild blueberry powder, it's like, I, I can just experience, like I can feel the energy rise. And that's what Eckhart exactly explained that we all need to be very clear, right? The lampshade should not be like very thick fabric and very dim light. We want to be very bright. So thank you, Caesar. Beautiful, beautiful analogy. Yeah. And I just want to touch on one more thing. You mentioned about the full moon that just amplifies the energy of everybody. So if you're in a down mood, um, that's going to amplify. If you're feeling grateful and loving and joyous and excited, that too will be amplified. So get on the right path quickly um, and take advantage of it instead of letting it take advantage of you. So awesome. but that was a beautiful analogy too. Yeah, in order to get them vibes high, everything is body, mind, and soul, and it starts with the diet. You, know, you got to feel good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I think this moon is a moon for renewal. Like uh, drop your old uh, conditioning and start a new. Eileen, thank you, Caesar. Eileen, you wanna talk about this? That do you see a little uh, subtle way which we couldn't say it is 
karma, but we are creating that reaction. You know what Eckhart calls uh, reactivity? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I have anything to add to it right now. I was dealing with a technology issue at the beginning of the conversation. Um, but I do think that that happens in your example. I think that's something that probably definitely happens and probably has even happened to me, (laughs) you know, on this journey, but, um, I don't really have anything to add right now though. The example of the envy that somebody is, and the way in your, um, so I've known um, or come across Eckhart's teachings in year 2011, I think. So 2012 was a shift for me as when I joined Corporate America. Like I'd taken a break from Corporate America. So when I joined Corporate America in 2012, I would not see, first I joined a team. I, di- I didn't join, I, w- I was a manager and I let go of the manager job. I didn't apply for a manager job, I joined a team and I always made sure that the other team member was, I didn't see my work should be successful. I started to make other people more successful, right? And it reflects in this group as well. I try to make other people successful. If anybody has noticed for the past five years, it's more about your success that I'm working towards. The whole uh, post is about your success. It's not, nothing to do with me, right? Because I've, I've already, I know how my life is unfolding, that there is enough provided, there's enough. So I'm saying you learn and each per- person has their potential within. Kunam cannot change it, Caesar cannot change it, April cannot change it, Eileen cannot change it for you. You have to do it yourself. That vibrational frequency that Caesar was talking about so that's how I changed that envy. So there's no more jealousy. Like it's been since 2012. There's no more in, any jealousy. And I, I really enjoy when I see my coworker getting recognition. I actually pitch in with joy, right? So thank you, Aileen. Thank you for that uh, reiterating that that is a pattern in humanity all across the board, right? Archetype, what Caroline May says, it's an archetype. Even like, I think Ryan was talking about last week with, you know, the ego comes in. So it's like, even if you consider yourself a spiritual person or a spiritual teacher, like that, that ego can still come in. It's just might be surrounding the topic of spirituality. So it's like, you still have that, um, I think we really have to focus on our own personal energy. Perfect. Thank you, Ali. April, after a long time, did you, did some insights arise? Yeah. um, Like when you were first describing it, I'm kind of, you know, it's, when we're talking about a prostitute, it's kind of like, whoa what are we talking about here? Right? Like, is there a moral to this? Like, where are we going with this? But the idea is one jealousy of, oh, this person's over here having fun and I'm not having fun. I'm now doing this spiritual thing. The other idea that's in there is um, not being, which is kind of where Caesar was headed or where he was headed with this was um, not accepting where I am at the moment. I need to be somewhere else than where I am. Whether I'm with the prostitute or I'm in the, you know, the mosque, wherever I am, I'm not happy with where I am. And that unhappiness, that non-acceptance, that non-presence is what creates karma. Karma is basically, if you want to put it very basically, karma is cause and effect. That, that's down to the bottom what it is, if you, you know, to make it very simple. And if you are not happy with where you are, wherever that is, then you are creating some force of karma. 
That's ultimately, right? So the key is to be happy where you are and to accept where you are and to not regret, to not have envy, to not be jealous. And, um, you know, definitely I've had those things in my life, those issues when I was going to school. Um, well, even before I started going to college, one of the things I did was I cleaned houses for a living um, for very rich people very, very rich people. And just going into these homes where there's 10 bedrooms. And I lived in a 1976 trailer. My trailer was like a 1976 trailer that originally was an office, not a home. So there's some jealousy and envy there that, you know, here I go to this heart doc specialist house and I'm cleaning it. And then I go back to the trailer park right um and so i have had those envies and jealous but i can say that um i can remember being in that trailer and not feeling that not feeling that jealousy and feeling like this is my home this is my space right and that is the sense, that's the feeling that we're looking for, that connection, that wholeness, that presence, that happiness. And so that's, I mean, those are my examples with the karma. And I think the ultimate answer is to uh, the gratitude, being happy for where you're at, who you're with, what's going on. That's the ultimate answer. Thank you, April. Talking about homes, um, when I was growing up and uh, I was watching Melba, um, who lives in the Philippines, and what happens in um, homes in India that are in poor neighborhoods, they put like tiles, and Caesar may be able to explain it better, tiles, one tile over the other, and it's made out of clay. And sometimes they can be holes in that clay. And so when it rains, it'll actually pour in into the home if the homeowner, and there's always like a struggle with landlords. It's not like here where you just call your um, homeowner and ask them to replace the roof or whatever your problem is at home, right? There, there's like this, and especially when I was little, so it's like years and years ago. So there was a struggle with the homeowner, so they wouldn't fix it. So we would put like buckets. Like literally, I remember like in, on my cot one day at night, I was lying down and there was drops of water falling on my chest, right? And I just like moved like a little bit so that it would just fall on the bed. So um, it's something like that. Like you just put a container and that's part of life. And you don't ever feel that um, there is, there's joy in being in, there's never a feeling of, oh, I, I'm deprived of something. I mean, I went to school, I had proper schooling and um, everything, right? So even in that little uh, frugal, very impoverished conditions where you are in one bedroom and you're sharing it with your mother and brother and, um, uh, you're just living out of this condition. So I can agree with you, April, that home is home, right? It doesn't have to be like all, all glitter and gold and whatever it, it is, right? It can be a leaky roof and you're putting containers all across the home so that you catch the rainwater, right? And they're not repairing it. So, but that was part of life. That is a part of Indian life, right? Like we wash our clothes with hand, and then we hang it on the, um, like on the rope, right? Put the uh, laundry clips and then uh, we didn't have a blender. So like how they show Native Americans that they had a little stone thing and then they would grind on the stone thing. I've done that. Like if I wanted to grind, wet grind something, I've used a stone because I was little and my mom thought that I had energy. So 
she would give it, the task was given to me, go grind, to go do all the sweat grinding. So, but there was joy in that as well. That, that is a beautiful insight. It doesn't mean that just because we are in impoverished conditions that we will be unhappy. And that's why, you know, when I see impoverished conditions, I never feel that that person is unhappy. Like so many people say, right, those kids in Africa, those kids in India, those kids in the Philippines, I don't think that they are unhappy. Here's Kelly. Good evening, Kelly. Yo. Good evening. We have no questions, Eileen. We have some comments and some people who were helping me with the technology issues on Facebook, uh, but no questions. Mm -mm. Awesome. Thank you. So I don't know if you'll remember, um, like December or January, we were talking about limiting beliefs around my seven spiritual laws of success. And we had gone through four spiritual laws. So I'll go through the other two. Uh, the sixth law is, uh, I don't know the English translation of it, but um, I would call it... Um, I don't know it as a law, but what it says is I'm in complete alignment with, I'm in, in complete alignment and harmony with cosmic law, right? So we say Om Varna Namaha, and then we say I'm in complete alignment and harmony with cosmic law. Now, what I want you all to think is what keeps me away from being in complete alignment and harmony with cosmic law. So every time that I think of the law and I look at my experience, and this has been for the past five, six years, I look at where am I not in alignment, right? What is it? So Caesar, you wanna talk about it? When can I, what is the limiting belief that can hold me from being in alignment? and harmony with the past. Um, one, the egoic mind. Um, conditioned patterns of thinking, um, I mean, not, not understanding like the law of impermanence and uh, attachment and things of this nature, um, you know, depending on what you know or, you know, where your knowledge is as far as what we know about the egoic mind and how it works, um, things of that nature. Uh, because you have to be, I mean, to be in alignment with cosmic law, that's kind of saying that you are completely present for one. So anytime you're out of, you know, you're not rooted in presence, um, you're definitely not going to be aligned with um, cosmic law. Um, you know, when you're not feeling peaceful and, and tranquil to, you know, everything that is, and you're not feeling harmonious, that would be my first indication that I'm not in alignment with cosmic law. I really couldn't tell you exactly what cosmic law is, as opposed to what the uh, rest of the panel could tell you, but it sounds beautiful. <laughs> and it just sounds to me like it is all that is, and it's the flow of, you know, life as we know it, or as I know it, um, of everything good. So, you know, when you're, when you're not uh, feeling, you know, that blissful, peaceful, grateful feeling, um, that would be my indicator that something's off. And would you want to be in alignment with cosmic law? I would definitely say yes. Um, so yeah, things of that nature would um, would be an indicator for me. Beautiful. Thank you, Caesar. April, did you want to uh, speak to what would be my limiting belief if I was not in alignment with cosmic law, and what would be my experience? Yeah, I think, I thought we did talk about this one when we did this. I think um, we, I talked about, we... Uh, we talked about we talked about this one more similar law. Um, yeah, I'm, I, re I receive maximum benefit with minimal effort. So that kind of feels like it's the same thing. But yeah. this one is uh, I'm in complete alignment and harmony. That means like total align with source. I am source yeah. at that moment. Yeah. 
And I think that that is, um, I guess you could use the word goal. Uh, that is what we're after. I think when I look at um, who Jesus was as a person, I think that's who he was or what he was demonstrating was alignment with source. And I feel like, um, you know, some of us are better at this than others. And some of us uh, grasp it easier than others or faster, or they are able to maintain it. Uh, but this is the process of learning to be in constant alignment with source. That is the task. That's the job. Um, that's the work to do. And what pulls me out of alignment with source is my family. <laughs> my family probably would be the biggest teacher. Family, children. Children are 100% my karma. They are such my karma. I never knew I created so much karma, but I had so many children. <laughs> I had so many children, you guys. I decided to work out all my karma in one lifetime. <laughs> so I would say my children and the limiting belief is that it's not that when I want my children to be perfect. So it's not about perfection. Um, it's about that. I feel like, um, I don't know. What is it? It's, it's kind of like, it's not perfection, but I guess I would like for there to not be so many problems or so that would be the limiting belief it's not perfection that i'm looking for though but i think i'm looking for them to understand you know we don't skip school because you gotta go because that's the right thing to do well kids don't understand that and they want to skip school and i remember skipping school i remember hiding in my closet, waiting for my mom to walk out the door, <laughs> right? So I'm not exactly, I haven't pinpoint the limiting belief. It's not perfection, but I guess I have this belief that maybe things should be easier. Maybe um, my kids should, you know, want to do better or be better or follow the rules more. That would be my bias my belief and then when I get that belief and when that doesn't happen when I have issues such as they don't go to class or something especially in this virtual world then the limiting belief goes back to me and I think I didn't teach them something right so now I'm onto myself and a limiting belief that perhaps maybe I'm not a good enough mom or I'm not a good enough teacher so that would be how I experience it would be I'm looking at myself and then I'm listening to Eckhart say, well, if you would have more presence with teenagers, they would be bitter children. <laughs> and then I think, really? I'm not sure if that would work because I try to have presence. So I kind of run around in this circle and I try to have presence because I'm supposed to be the spiritual person, right? And I'm supposed to be the counselor, right? And, but I think it's a goal that we work on. And I do think that presence is the answer and I think that um, at some point I do remove the limiting belief and I just realize that we're all on this process learning and that whatever experiences like I'm currently having an experience with one of my daughters right now with school and I reminded myself today that whatever it is that I'm experiencing for one it is what it is it is what it is two it, this too will pass. This is not permanent. And three, I can overreact. I can get upset. I can do this or that. But the more I do that, the less presence I have, the more off track I will be. 
the more away from source I will be and the worse I will feel. So just breathe, realize everything happens for a reason. It will all work out in the end and it will be okay. Whatever it's supposed to be, it's going to be. Beautiful. You gave the perfect example, April. That is what it is. It's resistance. I think it would be, if I were to put the name of the law, it would be law of least resistance. Because all of this is resistance, right? My daughter should do this. My daughter should go to school. My, who says that your daughter should go to school? Maybe she needs to just take a, a GED, like separate GED and do a different type of schooling or she uh, stay back from school for a couple of years and then she can go to a community college and take some classes, right? Do a GED and take some classes. Why is there not a different path for her? She doesn't need to follow the whole, like I say, right? I, I really wish the new teachers of this coming age teach children to discover what the unique talent is instead of just, oh, you have to do math, physics, chemistry, geography, history, blah, blah, blah. And 10th grade, you have to do so much math. Calculus, I've never used calculus. I've done differential equations in integral calculus. I have no, no idea. Well, it's the school system and it's the legal system that is intertwined with the school system. That's the problem. But it's funny that you said that, Funam, because as I'm, you know, considering this situation today, I had this, I had a client who had a scenario in another state. They actually were in Florida where they had um, gotten a little bit in trouble in school. And in Florida, when you get into trouble in school and the principal um, actually uh, kicked the child out of the school. And in Florida, once that happens, you can't go back to the school. You can't go back to the school in, in, in that county at all. You have to move to another county. And so this happened to this person and this person ended up in the juvenile system. And not that my child's ending up in the juvenile system, but um, this person had said this and they said, and I was like, oh, wow, that was a huge consequence for such a small act. And he said, yeah, well, you know, it's probably a good thing because it made it to where I graduated. And I thought about that today and I thought, well, maybe this is happening because there's another path she has to take. Yes. And, and I don't know what, the, yeah. And I, that doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to like it. And I think, you know, maybe I might so I just said to myself, just let it be what it is. Maybe there is a different path and you don't know the answer. And this younger generation is showing us that uh, April, like if teachers could, um, we had this conversation even in year 2019 uh, for School of Awakening, there were a, a whole group of teachers in that program, right? And they were talking about alternate methods of teaching children in a more conscious way, they were asking Eckhart that question during the opening retreat or closing retreat, I, I don't remember when, but this push is there. The younger generation is showing us there's so many uh, people that are dropping out of high school, right? Or saying, oh, the, um, I mean, I have so many friends that their kids uh, for a year just stayed back. They didn't do any, any schooling after uh, passing their um, high school, they didn't want to go to college, give them a year or two and they're back in college. So that means that that, that soul was not ready, like the brain was not ready to take on the responsibility of college. Doesn't mean that we label them, like Eckhart says, right? Don't label a person. Doesn't mean that they're never going to go to college or never going to become a successful person, they may take an alternate route, right? They may go to community college or they may go do a job or go, go 
go to Rome or go on vacation and come back for after a year of uh, sabbatical and then go go to college, right? Who's to say that's not a good path? So wait and see, but always remind her that she has incredible potential, that there is something that is unique about her, right? That's all we can expect, that they have that infinite potential. So law of least resistance. Eileen, do you have a, uh, any insights on when am I not in harmony and alignment with cosmic law? Yes, <laughs> of course I do. Oh my gosh, the last two days. Um, so I think that um, anytime that there's suffering, really, I mean, if you're truly in alignment with source and in the present moment fully, then um, there won't be suffering. And so any, it can be little or big amount of suffering. Um, and sometimes the suffering, your resistance to the suffering <laughs> attracts more suffering, <laughs> which is what's been happening to me for the last two days. Um, and so um, I do have experience with that. And um, I know that it gets easier. Um, I can sit there and watch myself suffer and talk to myself inside my head. Like, okay, this is what you're doing. Like you're doing this, like you need to drop this. Um, like watching myself go through it. And then, you know, an hour later to be like, why did I even just go through that for an hour? Like why? I was telling myself to drop it, but it literally takes me that long to drop it sometimes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that if people are truly in alignment with source and um, then there wouldn't be suffering, you know, the lessons will come and they'll come and come and come until you get it. But um, we definitely need to, and I, I think I even like, I like how April said like, what's meant to be will be so like if you truly accept every single thing and like i always say it doesn't mean you have to like it but if you truly accept every single thing because it is the thing that's happening currently um then that resistance isn't there and then the alignment can happen and there's less suffering beautiful Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, April. Yeah, and the suffering can come in the sense that, um, so I'll go back to the work situation um, where um, maybe they were uh, two or three different projects that were like high profile and I did not get that project. Uh, and I do uh, project management. I do infrastructure project management, right? Uh, in the IT world. So it may be that another person on my team got the project and the mind can arise and say, am I not good enough? Like what Eileen, you were saying before the this thing, right? It could arise and say, am I not good enough to take that, right? But then when we come to this law to be aligned, right? To be in harmony with source. It's like that uncompromising yes. Yes, if that person was chosen, then that is inevitability. I love Eckhart's words of the inevitability of the present moment. That is what is. It is showing us exactly what is, right? Our mind may say, no, uh, that project should be mine because I'm so capable, right? I, I do incredible work. Why is, uh, why is it not given to me? But the project is given to somebody else to show us that law. Can we bring a complete alignment that source has chosen it to be that way? And we say yes, right? And anytime there is a no or a resistance pattern, 
of irritation, annoyance. Uh, what Kelly says, right? Use your emotional field as your GPS. Anytime there's anger, irritation, that's all the resistance. We are not aligned completely. And that's the limiting belief arising. Thank you, Aline. So Kelly, good evening. Good to see you after missing you for a week. Kelly has been with us. So Louise and Kelly, Louise started maybe a week or two. Eileen has been with me from the start, but Louise started maybe a week or two after I started like doing uh, uh, this by myself. But then Kelly joined. So Kelly is one of the oldest panel members, oldest in the sense tenure wise, along with Louise. Louise and Eileen have been here. It's been almost a year. <laughs> You're getting a long beard. I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing the, the pie may thing where <laughs> Long white beard. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, I guess I guess it has been a while. Um, yeah, I missed everybody last week. It just sort of, you know, dealing with some food poison. It hasn't happened in a while, but it was just, you know, up all night and you know having to sleep all day kind of thing. Um, guess my uh, <laughs> my lower energy centers needed clean out. <clears throat> um. So, so the question is about, or the, the topic that we're discussing is about being in alignment with source. What is the, remember we were doing the seven spiritual laws of success and then I right. turned right. it into what is the limiting belief or what is the crosswind that can stop us from following the law, right? And the law is to be in alignment and harmony, in perfect alignment and harmony with I am in alignment and harmony with cosmic law every day i'm in every well, day every present moment I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna say something that might not be very popular but everything's in alignment with source and the reality is that we get to actively participate and choose what part of source we are engaging in and this is the whole point of being in a free will zone or being on this planet is to learn what the act of participation and not just letting, you know, the universe decide and going with the flow and learning how to feel that space of alignment with source. There are different parts of source, different types of energy in alignment with source, because even the darkness is needed to show us how strong the light is. And we can get comfortable believing that we understand the light. We can get comfortable believing that we know the light. And they, we are in alignment with source. And then, you know, all of a sudden life throws a supposed monkey wrench in the works and things go sideways, but they actually end up being the path because of all the lessons and all the growth that happens as a result of the choices that we have to make to stay strong in ourselves and stay, stay strong in our alignment. So being in alignment with source, I mean, any, any resistance, as uh, it's been mentioned, any resistance and, you know, Caesar, April, any resistance in the ego mind will obviously um, restrict our ability to be strong and to be present and to be in alignment with this part of source that is about love, love and kindness and gratitude and joy and bliss. And it's sort of one of those things where um, as, as a martial artist, the, the more that I understood how to be violent, the more compassionate and loving I became because the more I understood how easy it was to hurt someone physically, let alone mentally and emotionally, the more I respected <laughs> the people around me, the more I admired the people for training, the more I admired even just people going through their daily lives, just making the basic choices that they needed to make day in, day out. You know, um, when you understand how fragile a person's reality can be when a person is de is stressed is dealing with anxiety or depression i you know i've got a lot of that in my family i dealt with that when i was a teenager 
there are a lot of realities that we sort of, you know, we get on the spiritual path and we get on, you know, the, the, the growth kick, the spiritual growth kick. And we want to focus on that because we don't want to look at the actual, you know, darkness or the, you know, not so nice places in our psyche that have actually caused us to reach for this path so that we can heal and so that we can align and so that we can be present and so that we can grow spiritually and so that we can know peace because no one wants the chaos. No one wants the darkness. Not really. You know, those, those aspects of creation, those aspects of, of source, you know, and, and they are out there. We have to be wary of them. You know, they'll creep into our psyche. Those little doubts, those little fears, those programs, that we're all born into this in this illusion we all have to deal with it in different ways and that's where the the beauty of the learning and the evolving and the growth really shines is the variety you know and how everyone is completely unique and has a completely unique understanding and perspective and yeah i, I can't really say it any better than it already has been said by April, Caesar, and Eileen, and yourself, Poonam, in terms of the resistance and the ego space, the attachment to, and the resistance to seeing more. Um, I like to be a bit of a, uh, a pot stirrer, and I'll post things on my Facebook profile to see if people are able to feel what I'm saying and to question their reality or to look beyond sort of, you know, the current narrative of certain things. And it's always, you know, interesting to see who pops up and where they're coming from. Because once you've, well, for me, once I've, you know, done it enough times, it's really easy to hear where people's minds are at because most people just want to um, appease their own egos. And offer up their own, you know, intelligent answer or solution to my quote unquote problem. And anytime I post on Facebook, it's not because I don't know the answer. I've already got my, I've already done my research. I'm just curious to see what other people are going to do. Because that's so much fun. <laughs> it's like, get the popcorn. And, you know, that's also the other thing too, is, is to not resist what other people say because the, the moment you resist what someone else is, you know, and, and people often misunderstand when I post something that I'm, that I'm, you know, they believe I'm being resistant because I'm posting something that is controversial. I was like, no, I'm like, I, I've grown up in a family where I've had to have an open mind and keep an open mind and to learn how to accept. I mean, also the work, like working with first nations, working with, 18, 20 different First Nations at a time. There's so many different facets of, of cultural realities to, to balance and communicate through and, and to work with. You know, and never mind uh, dealing with, you know, industry and government as a policy analyst. I mean, oh my God. Um, you know, in, in the work that I've done in the environmental field as a, as a policy analyst, as a researcher, I've had to keep my mind open. I, you know, in coming from a political family, I've had, you know, both, uh, you know, you know um, liberals as in here in like small L liberals in Canada and social Democrats, I guess you could say the NDP are, and the whole spectrum in the entire family. So, family gatherings are always interesting and when it comes to politics and current you know situations in the world and it's one of the things that i've learned i mean especially especially when it comes to politics because <laughs> you know half my family's irish and they love a good fight they love a good argument so it's just like you just gotta let it happen you know and half the times that that just ends you know any argument or any friction because just, you know, again, not resisting. Actually taking that into the real world is, is not about arguing, but about accepting the other person's point, perspective and understanding where it's coming from and understanding that there is the intellectual, the mental analysis, the judgment and the ego validation. And then there's that other space 
that we use to feel our world with and that we're not always um, aware of until we actually start spending time with it. He says, oh, very thin mask. Oh, right. It's like that's people don't get it. And I post it saying, thanks for participating in my research. And they're like, what? I'm going, no, seriously. That's what I that's why I post stuff. And they're like, rah, 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 rah. angry words, angry words, angry words, angry words, sailor language, sailor language. I'm going, bye. Okay. And it's, you know, it's not a joke. I don't, I don't joke about that. It's like, it's very literal. That's how I approach everything because I want to know where people are coming from. I want to know how to communicate. And a lot of times, you know, especially in social media, people forget, you know, they're like, they, they're, they're all safe at a distance. And I know there's a lot of people who, who have gotten, you know, in my face that if we were actually like face to face, that never would have happened. I'd be like, they just, you know, it's just not going to happen face to face because people are comfortable, right? They want to be safe. They want to, they want to continue keeping their ego safe and they don't see how they use social media to do that. They don't listen. They don't, they're not aware that it's even a possibility. You know, people think that you're just having a conversation. It's like, eh. But yeah, that's like, exactly. It's just like why I, years ago, before I even had a smartphone or like Facebook was a real thing, I used to talk to one of my best, best friends, Sean, about getting the popcorn out. And he's like, what? what do you mean? He's just like, well, what's your mind doing right now? I'm like, I'm just like watching your, your, your gerbil in your head, just like go and go and go and go. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, right, eh? It's like, damn, you know, and then, you know, it opened up the door to some really awesome conversations, but that, you know, that's, you know, even when I was like, yeah, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that's what I was doing because be like being an empath and being intuitive, I had to teach myself how to listen to their words, but also listen to what they were emoting, what they're energetically projecting outwards so that I could figure out how to actually respond in a safe way, you know, in, in a way that would continue the conversation and not resist what they were projecting, not resist what I was feeling, but understand how to listen on multiple levels at once. And this to me is about being emotionally responsible. And it's always been about being emotionally responsible. You know, sometimes I have more patience for it than others, <laughs> you know? And um, like, you know, today, it's just like I've had, you know, people get very like intellectual at me and I'm just asking, you know, just look beyond just look beyond the mainstream narrative. Just open your mind. There's there's other things going on, and it's just like no. It's just like people assume that I'm like stupid, which is like always good for a laugh because that's their you know their, their that projection is always so obvious and is always like so loud. I'm going, thanks, but okay, bye. It's you know I don't don't need to engage that. It's not about resisting their their perspective. It's just like their perspective is really obvious. They don't want to have a conversation. They want to. They want to judge, and they want to dictate your reality. Yeah, and they, and they want that argument. I'm just like, you know, and again, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> literally, I'm writing a book on this. Thanks for participating in the research. This is awesome. They're like, you know, every once in a while, it really gets to that point where it's just like, I will just post a meme of someone eating popcorn because I have no words, right? And that's also one of the things to recognize is like sometimes when we, when we talk about people in, in resistance and in their, in their minds and their ego validation mode, that's you know, also a gift because just being able to observe that, just being able to understand what's going on demonstrates to yourself how much growth you have accepted for yourself how much you've given to yourself and sometimes it's it's a lot of work to observe those those ego spaces it is it's not easy it's not easy all the time and yeah there's there's a very definite level of satisfaction and joy and love being in a space of alignment and in the heart where you can observe that and you know it just let it wash off your back like water off the duck's back you know but it's not easy all the time and it's, but there is an odd sense of bliss in carrying the weight 
and working through those spaces too. And this is sort of one of the things that I like to share uh, about and why I, I love being on this panel is because even when it seems like a struggle, when you are conscious that you are struggling, you are conscious of what you're feeling, what your thoughts are, and why. Even if you don't want to look at it, if you are conscious that you are struggling and you feel like everything is hard, that is because you are actually aware of what you are feeling and what is in your heart and how there is a friction and an incongruity and there is not alignment with you know, the person that you're around or even what's coming up for yourself inside. And those moments are also some of the, the deepest opportunities for growth. And, you know, I have been having some interesting interactions with my family lately because of everything that's going on. And it's just sort of, you know, I, I realized that years ago I would have participated in the arguments and just accepting and not resisting and not arguing. Again, you know, like half Russian, half Irish and other things. It's just sort of like part of me just really enjoys that space of, of arguing just for the sake of of that kind of interaction but there's you know understanding that feeling those spaces and, and other people's projections and being able to identify that and feel that and and appreciate that yes yes and and to to <laughs> it's very zen it is like it's it's it is that zen space of non-attachment you're, you're not in in dualistic judgment you're, you're not in an ego validation and you are accepting as, as, you know, as we just mentioned earlier, April, like it is what it is. You're just accepting it. And those moments of feeling that struggle and just, okay, this is just what it is right now. That's fine. I'm fine. It's just like, you know, life I think goes once on. The, I think once the world gets to a space where everybody will be allowed to have their opinion without trying to make everybody else conform yep. to that opinion or that idea, that is where we will have peace. And that's one of the things that Eckhart really talks about. He demonstrates through many of his talks, his ability to just accept anything, everyone, everything, no matter what, with no judgment he just purely accepts and that's that space of stepping back of allowing somebody to gravel somebody to argue but you are over here in this space of okayness and yep. acceptness and you're okay that they're all upset and they're slamming their fist and you're still over here like Oh, I love you. I just love you. But it's just I think that very um one of the teachers I listen to says that if you are struggling and if you are having emotions and you're struggling and you're aware that you're struggling, one, you've created awareness, which means you've actually stepped outside of yourself, but two, also that congratulations your emotional guidance system is working exactly exactly yeah. yes thank you so much for that april exactly Perfect. thank you april thank you kelly so uh for the past few years to cement this law i've listened to chapter 10 of uh, eckhart's the meaning of surrender Abby, 40, 50 times. Um, I remember like uh, three or three years ago, uh, almost four years ago, I was trying to, um, after Eckhart's teachings and supporting this group, I was like, um, okay, I need to do something. You know, I got very enthusiastic about, um, let me see what I can do for my, just like I got enthusiastic and started all this, right? Like the group meditation, uh, talk to Parker about what more can we do with this group? I was like that at work as well, right? So I went to my manager, I go to my manager and say, 
oh, maybe one of my goals should be that I improve the emotional intelligence. I kind of couched it like in the language of business. I said, um, uh, maybe improve the emotional intelligence of the group, like find uh, exercises to do that, right? And he didn't, he didn't really like that idea or it didn't support me. All right, I felt the energy wise, the support was not there. So what I did was, then comes the resistance, right? Like you are not being supported by your own superior, right? Then you're almost like, oh, okay. Um, and to me, it's like with Eckhart's teachings, it's like the most brilliant idea on the face of this earth where you're trying to bring empathy and compassion into everybody and make them work as a team, collaborate, cooperate, all those uh, really um, those kind of intrinsic qualities that come as part of unity consciousness, right? What is a person that is in unity consciousness? They, they think of the whole world as it's not my child, it's every child on this planet, right? It's not my brother, it's every brother on this planet, it's not my sister, it's every sister on this planet, right? All the mothers on this planet, all the fathers on this planet. Um, something of that nature comes into your beingness. And that's where I was coming from. And he said, no. And so um, I, I just accepted, move immediately. I listened to the meaning of surrender a couple of times. Then uh, it, it, the path, the yielding to and not resisting to what is, right? The profound wisdom of yielding to and not resisting the flow of life. So I was like, if I don't get seated in my consciousness, then I will introduce resistance and this is my manager. I cannot have resistance against my manager because something else will go wrong, like Eileen says, right? More suffering will be introduced. So I let a few months go, I started producing in other areas, right? I kept my work ethic up. And I, uh, so two or three months later, we were reorged and moved under another um, uh, senior leader. And that senior leader came in for a town hall to Dallas. And somehow when they were introducing the senior leader one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I mean, in a group setting, right? They pushed him in my direction, right? And he turned to me and asked me a question, uh, what, are you, what are your greatest worries or something? And all I did was I asked him, um, do, you, do you think it, it would be great that we start mindfulness at work into our business unit, right? Um, wherever we were in our location. And he introduced me to another person. I just followed the lead, right? In alignment with and harmony with cosmic law. If this person said, go call this person, that person calls that person. Then that person said, go to contact this general manager, which was way outside of my business unit. I contacted them. And so ultimately I introduced mindfulness at the year um, 2019. Before I left, uh, I introduced mindfulness full-fledged, like I used to do mindfulness classes like every uh, once a month. And there are two different office locations here in Dallas. I would hold, post it one week in my location, then go travel to another city. And within the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there are quite a few suburbs. I would travel to that city, host the mindfulness session there. But look, look at how the universe supports us. The whole reason why I said this whole long story was how well we are supported once we come into alignment so April, once you come into alignment with cosmic law, you'll be supported and you'll see something will change about your daughter. Something is gonna shift in her the moment you... Uh... So this brings me to what I want you to tell your daughter. The next law is um, I'm a field of inf infinite possibilities, right? Om, Om Baba Nama. I'm a, and sometimes uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra says, Aham Brahmasmi, right? Either of those two are, I am the universe, or I'm a field of infinite possibilities. Now, what is going to prevent me from being 
a field of infinite possibilities. April, you want to get started? Because you're going to tell your daughter, you're a field of infinite possibilities, daughter. No matter what wow. you do, what whatever your choices you make, but this can lead to so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Like, you know, if you act hardy at school, then it can lead to truancy court. You have to go to court, whatever it may be, right? Like explain the consequence and it's your choice. You have free will. You choose what you want to do. Well, um, both of my daughters, my younger daughters are, they're at, I've had done so many teenage girls I've done so many teenage girls now. Um, they're just at the age where teenage girls become difficult earlier than boys, but they stop earlier than boys. Boys usually start later, and then boys, for whatever reason, usually end up in jail, <laughs> spend the night in jail, and then they, you know. Um, so these girls are young, and they're in that stage right now. And um, I will tell them that, and I try to tell them that. Um, but I think the work honestly is within me. Because of their age, because of their cognitive abilities and where they're at cognitively, I think the presence power is within me and the acceptance is within me that whatever the consequence is, the faster I accept that consequence and put that energy out there, I think the better they will. I also think that the faster that I move into acceptance of this, um, the more that the universe will fall into line, like what you're saying, the more it will, and perhaps even work out more in my favor than versus me getting all upset, worked up. I, I really just like, you know what? I just feel like when you start really practicing this work and you really start getting the alignment thing and, and you start getting the source thing um, that you are part of source. And then you also start understanding that really in essence, everything happens for a reason. Your resistance is futile. <laughs> I don't know how else, to, I'm not trying to be mean, but really, it, it, what are you fighting it for? And I'm not saying to not ever have any beliefs. I'm not saying to not ever you know, advocate for something, but me resisting this situation, it is a waste of my time and energy of which I don't want to do. So the more I become in the line with source and I, the more it flows for you, the, the easier it will be, regardless of the outcome, the easier it will be on me and perhaps her, I think. And then I, my idea here is that that energy will flow out to the school. Yes. Right. And the people that are in charge of this, um, so that's where I'm at with it. And I think that's really how a lot of things work in life, whether that's with your job or that's with your friends or that. So even like, um, even like my husband, for example, my husband um, is, he is an aggravator. I, I have always said to him, I am so glad I was never your mother because he's a very annoying person. Like he will purposely ask the dumbest questions, repeat words, just, just purposely. But the more I resist that, the more he does it, right? The more that I have that energy of, oh, will this person, <laughs> right? So it could be him. It could be the lady at the gas station. I swear, if you're irritated, the lady at the gas station counting her change out of the pocket purse takes 20 times longer. <laughs> if you're irritated, then if you're not, right? This is about this law of resistance, about not being in alignment. The faster I accept that we are counting out 22 pennies, the less painful it is, the less struggle it is, right? 
So for me, that's the whole thing is the faster I can align myself back up with source, align myself up with it is what it is. It's going to be okay. Life will go on. It, whatever happens with my daughter, perhaps she has to go to another school. Perhaps she has to graduate somewhere else. And for whatever reason, those are the things that needed to happen in her life for whatever happens in the end, because I can't say this to people enough. The day that I noticed this, it pretty much knocked me to my knees, but there was a day with my older children where I had this realization that these are not my children. These are God's children. They're not mine. He gave them to me to raise as I was as the mom at that time, but they're not actually mine. They're not a possession. They're, they're not actually my children. They're God's children and they have their own path in their own life. Right now I'm there to guide and I am trying to do that, but I'm trying to do that within her own soul path. And I can only play that part so, so much. Right. So I really think that when you come into a line with this, the more you practice this practice, um, the more peace that you have overall with everything, whether it's the child, whether it's the lady at the gas station or at work, it's all of it. The husband saying annoying words. Yeah. Oh, that, right. <laughs> so. Beautiful. You just made a shift like from 20 minutes ago to now. Look at the peace that you have. April on your face. Like your complete alignment right now in that realization. And that's all that was needed. Yeah, it's because the resistance, like Eileen was saying, it's just, it's creating suffering. I can fight it all I want and I can have my principles, right? I'm going to have my principles. And that's what a lot of Facebook arguments are, is I have my principles. And you need to hear my principles. Okay, what is that doing? We're going to go on and argue for days on end on Facebook or with this situation for what? It's the wrong energy that we're putting in, like Caesar said. It's the wrong energy. I don't want that energy. Yeah. And then um, the resistance that you build in your daughter is you're going to make her feel and this is uh, against that law of uh, experiencing I'm a field of instead of knowing that I'm a field of infinite possibilities she's going to say even my mother does not understand me and she gave me birth right when we get in alignment and say you be whoever you are but these are the consequences and I'll let you go those are going to be the consequences. I let it go because I need to be in alignment with, I need to be in alignment with source. You do whatever you want, right? You, you're your age. You do what you want. I need to, my job is to be in alignment with source, right? But I know you have infinite possibilities. So then she, feel, then the connection is there with her, right? You're completely connected. You're showing unconditional love. No matter whether you stay in school, you leave school, I love you. I love you. And that's all as a mother I can do for you is just unconditionally love you. Both. Right? And that's all that is needed. Then you are connected to source. Because what is source? Her inner being is loving you and your inner being is loving her. And that's all that is needed. Right? Beautiful. Beautiful example. So uh, one of the limiting beliefs can be I'm a loser. I'm not meeting society's expectations. Right out of this example, I, uh, I got those um, limiting beliefs. Um, Caesar, did you want to thank you so much, April? Beautiful example. Caesar, did you want to speak to this? Uh, do you see any limiting beliefs to I'm in? Why do people feel I'm not? infinite possibilities limited beliefs um i believe it starts probably at a young age you know in the household you grew, grew up in like, um, rich dad poor dad um like you was mentioning about the water dripping um and you didn't know any better to see the contrast of 
the people that didn't have leaky roofs. Um, so you didn't know better. Um, so a limited belief to that would be, you know, as April put it, you know, I'm not good enough. Um, anything really negative would be a limited belief. Any, any negative thoughts, which is the first thing um, in the law of attraction, which I think is um, pretty close to what we're talking about here. I mean, we talk a lot about resistance and, you know, it's resistant thoughts that keep things from showing up regardless of what it is in life. Um, you know, you're on the wrong side of the stick, you know, where you're focusing your, your attention or your energy um, as the reflection, like April was saying about, um, you know, having a bad day and it just keeps getting worse and, and so on and so forth. Um, that's because the universe is the reflection of how you feel. Um, and it offers back exactly how you feel. And if you pay attention to that, you'll you'll have validation and you'll start putting the two together and, and really believing in it. Um, so limited beliefs are any negative thoughts about whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, when you just, and everybody says, you know, you gotta work hard to get what you want. Um, I think that's, um, that's a false statement anymore. You have to be in alignment with what you're trying to get and it's not about working hard, it's about alignment. Um, working hard takes a lot out of you. Um, I've experienced that. I'm, <laughs> I feel like I got one foot in the grave anymore. <laughs> and now I just um, effortlessly sit back and because I feel as though I have everything I want, more stuff just keeps showing up and it, um, I'm just always amazed and excited and just, Things just keep flowing in that same way. Um, and I understand that, that when I get off that course, when I'm not feeling excited or grateful, um, I understand quickly, I recognize it quickly uh, to get that good momentum flowing again, to jump back in that, that high flying disc. And, and it's all about just feeling grateful. But yeah, again, um, it, it's resistant thoughts would be the negative you know, beliefs um, to whatever it is you're trying to get, long story short. Thank you so much, Caesar. Yes, ma'am. And I feel um, that experience of that we are safe, that no matter, we can allow life to flow actually comes from once we have that stillness practice, once we are essentially that formlessness in that stillness practice, then we realize that infinite potentiation, right? In that field where there is no thought, uh, what uh, J. Krishnamurti calls thoughtless awareness or choiceless awareness in that pure presence, pure awareness is when we, when we are aware of the potential, the infinite possibilities, right? And anything after that, I am, I am fat, I'm thin, I'm, I'm dark skin, I'm light skin, whatever that I am follows is just a label, right? It's not that field of formlessness. Yes, and knowing that it's okay, to attempt something and not succeed at it because there again you'll have, you have you would have experienced the contrast of something so you're always going to gain um in some fashion by what they call failure we know there are no failures in life um and no matter what happens it's always okay it's always been okay and the only time it's not okay is i guess if you're if you croak um so you know and even, even if you croak that is alignment it's still okay. Yes. Absolutely. First, but like it says, you don't have to croak to get there. Uh, I love Wayne Dyer had conducted a study, um, Dr. Wayne Dyer, and he was a thousand people basically on their deathbeds. And the question was, what was their biggest regrets? And not one person answered something that they did. Everybody answered in something they didn't do. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank kind of you. Something good, good thing. 
Thank you so much for that beautiful talk. Kelly, you want to wrap it up? It's been a long night. Sure. Thank you. Um, every, everyone is a limitless universe of possibilities. I, I really liked what uh, April had to say about her kids when she realized they were not her kids, but, you know, children of God, children of the universe, if you will. One of the things that I realized with, you know, my family, because I grew up, you know, where the whole point was like to argue about everything for, you know, especially when it came to politics. When I stopped myself from arguing with, you know, within that context at, at the dinner table, I had a huge revelation because the conversation just died. And I went, oh, there's a whole other reality here that I have not been aware of. I think it was like when I was 15 or 16. And I just agreed with what was being said because I realized that what was going on is was a pattern of just wanting to um, participate. So to participate, you had to argue your point and resist each other, right? And I went, wow, I can just accept the information. I can just accept another person's point of view and not have to argue it. And this is one of the exercises that I do all the time with social media is, you know, seeing who gets triggered, who wants to argue, to see where people's minds are, to see whether or not they'll argue their point and how much they'll hold on to, <laughs> you know, that, that need to resist someone else's perception of reality and to convince the other person that they're right. Um, a perfect example is, you know, something that's going on on my Facebook page today, but I'm probably just going to, you know, ignore it. The reality is that when we stop and listen, when we stop and observe what we're feeling versus what our conditioning and our patterning is telling us we should argue for and we should hold on to, it changes a lot of things. When we learn that in order to honor ourselves and love ourselves, it's not about fighting. It's not about fighting the good fight. It's about being still and being patient and being loving of the other person's perspective, no matter what, no matter what. Even if they're very, you know, um, judgmental and condescending and think that they're right, that's fine. That's their perception of reality. The thing is, no one can actually tell you what your personal experience is. No one has experienced it other than you. And that is where your own self recognition has to begin. Is understanding that no one outside of you can tell you who you really are. And no one knows what your personal experience actually was or is in this moment. This is why going inside and being still and learning how to listen is so important because that is where we begin to understand that the world and the entire universe is full of limitless potential and possibilities. And that this is where we really are supposed to be is in that limitlessness is understanding that is feeling that with every breath and accepting that. And it can be very hard to get to that space of recognition that that is even a possibility because we are so convinced that we need to be right about something, that we need to control our reality, that we need to project outward and control our reality so that we're safe emotionally. And coming from uh, you know a family that's been in politics for generations is like I see you know decades of arguments for this concept or that concept. When you know April, as as you said, it's like we're all supposed to be in that space of alignment. You know how do we actually find that common ground? Well, it, it starts with love. It starts with understanding that we all want to be loved and we all want to love someone else and others. We all we all want everyone to be safe and to feel love in their life. And the reality is that that is the core possibility that everything else springs from. 
except we've gotten lost in fighting for what we think is the right way. And in fighting and in resisting the just acceptance and resisting just allowing people to have their own personal experience and not judging, we lose sight of that. And that's what we're born into. That's the illusion. That's the Maya. The, the illusion of the astral, the illusion of the mind, the illusion of the ego, the illusion of attachment. When we constantly fight and resist other people, there's no resolution. There's no ability to see the limitless potential and possibilities that exist in everyone and in every moment. It's just, yeah, you know, might as well, you know, sit down and get a chair and, and get the popcorn and, and the drink and stuff like that. Because other, you know, until you actually learn how to accept things and allow things to just be and to step back into observation and be still without thought, when you stop your mind from judgment, that's a big deal. And it's hard work and it takes practice. That's the other thing. It's like anyone who's watching this, you have to understand it takes practice and it takes learning and it takes the discipline of the practice to learn how to feel and connect with that space and to get into that space and to give yourself more of that space and to accept that that is who you are and that that is the possibility of who you are. And that the limitless of your expression springs and blossoms from that well of love that is inside of you and that connection with spirit and source. My two cents for tonight. Thank you so much, Kelly. I know it's getting late, so I want to expound on what you have just stated. Um, we can resume again next week. Uh, wishing everyone a speedy recovery, whoever is not feeling well. Um, and many blessings. I am, it's an honor and a privilege week after week we meet and you'll bring up all these insights. I am like eternally grateful. So many blessings. Have a good night. Thank you.